Hey guys, this is a look at a uh, Red Lake Motion Scope high speed camera. Uh, yes, more high speed video equipment. Um, I picked this up on eBay for 100 bucks. Uh, it is a. Where's the model? Model 100 0001, uh, serial number 122. Uh, yeah, we'll have to see if this thing actually works. Uh, this one's a bit odd. Most of the units I've seen that look like this uh, have a separate camera head on the end of a cable. This one has a camera head that mounts straight onto the uh, end of the camera and it can be... Uh, you can just pull it off. There's this uh, D-sub connector. So let's hook this up and see if it works. Okay, it seems to do something. Uh, doesn't seem to do anything when I cover the lens. What can we do? We can go through the menus. Let's just try recording. Play. Okay, we're getting some sort of garbage on the screen. Hmm. It's quite possible there's something wrong with this. Left to pop it up and see if any, see anything obvious. go. Yeah, pretty old uh, old style CRT board on the top to drive that tube. What else do we have in here? Aha, from this side we can see all the RAM. What is that? It must be older than EDO, I think. But yeah, look at all that. Wow. And yeah, a bunch of control boards in here. There must be a CPU somewhere, although I'm not... See, it must be under there, under... Uh, under this cage here. Anyway, let's just check for anything easy. Let's just try re-plugging all the connectors and seeing if that will fix it. If you quickly cycle power, you can see how slowly the CPU draws the uh, OSD. I've tried reseating all the connectors I can, unfortunately to no avail, but I have uh, noticed this coax running from this module over to the uh, Board, and right next to it, uh, where the coax enters, is a Sony video ADC. And looking at that signal on the scope, we do get, if I pull, hold my hand in front of the sensor, we get something, so the uh, camera is working to some extent. And also, by dividing the line period by the frame period, I've found the uh, resolution of this is 128 by 128. And at 300 frames per second, that's only about 5 megapixels per second, so this really is a, quite a crappy camera. Here's the main board. Uh, obviously the most prominent thing is the 16 uh, SIM modules. These are 4 megabytes each for uh, 64 megs total. It seems most of the logic is implemented in uh, as a few discrete parts plus numerous uh, PLDs. Uh, some power supplies up on the top left. Um, there's a microcontroller over here. This is a uh, 68HC11 that must uh, run the show basically. Uh, let's take a more detailed look at this. I was just looking at these parts and I noticed there's a very, very fine uh, metallic piece jumping or bridging these two uh, pins here. I'm wondering if that's actually what's causing the problem with this camera. The uh, analog video from the uh, CCD amplifier module comes in here. That must go into this uh, Sony D1179Q uh, video da ADC. That's uh, 55 mega sample per second. Um, the data then must go into, there's some FIFOs here. Uh, this one is a 256k uh, k-byte FIFO. These two are uh, PAL line FIFOs that are was it 11, 1135 words, which is kind of an odd size. Various Glue Logic 74F series. The large FIFO is a uh, D42280GU, and the two smaller FIFOs are uh, D42102G. Let's see what some of these PLDs are. They're very labeled various things. We have, uh, what is it, C 
count, column count, row count, CAS, RAS, signals for the RAM, uh, CONT, I'm sure that is a buffer, buff C, DSPT, MUX A. On the other side we have graph, graphics, MUX B. And these are all labeled August 94. Most of the chips in this are 93, 94 date codes. This is probably a made in uh, the late, uh, late 1994. We have here Altera EPM seven zero three two LC forty four. Uh, let's see what that is. Okay, these are uh, Altera uh, Max seven thousand PLDs. These are uh, thirty two Macrocell six hundred logic gate parts. I'm a bit puzzled as to why they used so many small CPLDs compared to one uh, big one. It seems it would be a lot of effort if you had to change something. You may have to reprogram ten devices. You have to unplug them, program and plug them back in. Which seems a bit ridiculous, although maybe they needed it because of the uh, large pin count required and somehow it made sense in this application. There's also a lot of bodge wires all over this thing, especially uh, around this the video output area over here. There's uh, numerous uh, bodges and components added and all sorts of things. And even more bodginess on this regulator. <laughs> Look at that. This appears to be the uh, CCD driver. Uh, this end connects over to the uh, CCD camera. Uh, there's three horizontal boards in this, two vertical boards, one at each end. Uh, this goes over to the main board. Uh, so does this. This uh, appears to be the uh, actual video output. This probably contains the uh, drive electronics for, uh, I'm assuming this is a CCD in here. It's probably not CMOS. It contains drive electronics for the uh, uh, clocks and uh, amplifiers for the uh, relatively weak video outputs. Here's the top board. This is labeled the Laurel Fairchild Cam 4002 Logic Board, made by Thomas. Hello, Thomas. <laughs> uh, July 1993. Uh, there's not too much on this. It has a couple of uh, 74 LS240 uh, logic parts, 7404, and this, which is uh, an Altera. EPS 448 PC. Uh, I've been struggling how to describe this. It's a really odd part. Uh, the datasheet describes it as a uh, standalone uh, microsequencer, and it's sort of like a CPU, but it isn't. It's, it has elements of a CPU. It has a 448 word 36 uh, bit uh, program memory, or uh, microcode as they call it has branch logic and uh, has a stack, has a counter, but it has, it's designed to implement a state machine, basically. Um, there, it has only four, uh, four bit uh, instruction words, so it's very few instructions, but the, the branch logic is optimized for doing state machines and things. For example, it can uh, add values to, the, to, branch, uh, to branches based on the values on input pins. It's a very odd device. I haven't seen anything like this before, and as far as I can tell, no one makes anything like this anymore. It's the uh, things I guess are now done with. Uh, oh, hello, kitty. Things done with FPGAs and PLDs now. And if you if you want to know more, go have a look at the data sheet. It's quite interesting. This probably is used, almost certainly is used to generate the timing uh, clock signals for the uh, CCD, which need various uh, horizontal and vertical clocks and things, and probably also. Uh, Thanks for this sample and hold. Here's the second board. This one's labeled the uh, drive board, drive board, uh, drive board assembly. Uh, this almost certainly generates the CCD clocks. There's several uh, four terminal adjustable regulators, numerous pots to adjust voltages, uh, two dual 1.5 amp power FET drivers that those uh, drive the CCD clocks. An old uh, 741 over here. And strangely, there's some RS. Uh, 422 differential drivers and receivers. Uh, curious what those are for. Also some strange things. There's missing unpopulated ICs here, but for example there's a crystal that uh, appears to connect to this one. They've populated that but haven't populated the IC. And there's a few bodges. Uh, P2 
bead with some few turns of wire on it and some resistors and diodes. This board is labeled the assembly video board, uh, revision A1. Uh, this seems to be the uh, out analog uh, processing board for the CCD output. Uh, this is a uh, 500 volt per microsecond 70 megahertz op amp. Uh, this is a 350 megahertz uh, unity gain buffer and this is a uh, 600 volt per microsecond op amp. Uh, a couple of regulators plus and minus, uh, another LM741, a bunch of transistors, yeah, not too too much on this board. Uh, this one seems to be older than the other ones. It has a, uh, on this side, I was initially thinking this was the date, but the other on the other side it says 1187, that doesn't make any sense, so I'm thinking this 1491 is 14th week of 1991 date code. And the other board, this one has a uh, 1591 date code, so these boards are a couple of years older than the uh, other board for some reason. And Laurel Fairchild uh, is actually related to Fairchild Semiconductor. Uh, Fairchild Camera and Imaging uh, was the initial company, and Fairchild Semiconductor was a spin-off from that. And the original uh, Fairchild Camera and Imaging was bought out by several other uh, companies, uh, defense companies, etc. A few botches on the uh, other side of this uh, control board, and the date code on the board is 2993, so 29th week of 1993. And it's time to take a look at the camera head. Oh yeah, there we go. Not much on this board, just a 74S109, which is a dual JK flip-flop. There's a different dual differential line receiver. That's pr I'm assuming that that's used to get some signal over this uh, connector for a clock, maybe. Because I'm assuming the way this is designed, you could optionally plug a cable uh, between these two units to have a remote camera head. And there's another dual 1.5 amp uh, FET driver. This camera head has two boards in it. Uh, one, we looked, one we looked at earlier, a couple of uh, ribbon cables, sort of paper, copper encapsulated in paper, and then the sensor board, which pretty much just has some passives on it. And it says Laurel Fairchild Assembly. Uh, I think there was a date on the back of this. Made in USA. Revision 2. 2094, yeah. I'm actually thinking this is not a CCD anymore. I think this is an NMOS sensor, uh, like the other cameras. I was reading a little bit more about uh, both these types. I was initially thinking that NMOS and CMOS sensors are almost the same, but it turns out they're not. They're quite different. And NMOS is sort of almost uh, more like a CCD, and I'll do a more detailed video on those later. I think I might just have an idea of what's wrong with this. Uh, looks like the pins on the RAM here are uh, touching the uh, this metal piece. You can see indents uh, all along where the, pi the pins are touching. And because this is anodized, this is uh, the surface insulating, but I think that after it's it's contacted enough, it's you actually worn little pits into it and it's c contacted and shorted out. That could explain why the uh, camera's not displaying any image. <laughs> that should do the trick bit of PET plastic from one of these really nasty, horrible to open uh, types of product packaging. Okay, let's see if this thing does any different now. Anything different now? Hissing noise, I think that we got before. I'm definitely doing something different. <laughs> Not getting any display. Let me 
internal. Hmm. Need to recheck all the connections. There's definitely something wrong with the power supplies in this because one of these regulators is extremely hot. Uh, I'll have to do some more troubleshooting on this, but that'll have to wait for the next video. Anyway, I hope you found this teardown of the Red Lake Motion Scope interesting. Thanks for watching.